Same time. First, the Kentaro Yamaka, then the Rabbinic Yamaka. Because canners can't talk. You can. <laughs> which is found actually in the next psalm. Um, I'm sure many of you should know this melody as well. Conclusion of Psalm 99, Romamu. So for Psalm 29, the next Psalm, something a little bit different. Some of you may not be familiar with 
this version of it by the wonderfully talented composer from St. Louis, Rick Recht. I'm sure this is one that perhaps many of you may know. It's Al Khadodi that Craig Taubman first made famous in his first Friday Night Alive. Let's Let's go. 
paperraha Meerdos niin elämme mesutaan Sopata se mä maksavaakin la 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 Me matotti ikrat ikrat kalla Me neit me neishaavat ikabelaan Me alle matotti ikrat ikrat kalla Me neit me neishaavat ikabelaan Mikkas me lähet Kirmi lukaan, kun mit se ihmi tohaa pehaan. Rahla sävet pien me kattamaan. Me ujat molla laajit ja la 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 la. Me kattouti, nikrat nikrat kalla. Me nyt menei kaapat nikapilaan. Ja tolle katjoki, nikrat nikrat kalla. Me nyt menei kaapat nikapilaan. Kiit na pagi me a pagumi, si pagjay ni parte kami ay akin siya ay talaki. Koro na nasige ala la 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 la. Nagtoki ni krat ni krat kala, benet benet siya at ni kala. Nagtoki ni krat ni krat kala, benet benet siya at ni kala. to one uh, more piece. This one, another piece by Rick Recht. Uh, Ms. Marcher, his introduction to Psalm 92. I hope you like it. Ms. Marcher, 
And now, though, for those who are saying Kaddish, I invite you all to rise and we'll recite together uh, one of Kaddish, Kaddish Shatom. Yit Kadal, Viet Kadash, Shemei Rabah, Be Alma, Divra, Kirute, Viamlich, Mahute, Be Kaye Khon, Uviome Khon, Uve Kaye, the whole Beit Israel, Bagala, Visman, Kari, Vimru, Amen. 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 <laughs> 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 Bechayim aleinu ve'akol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. Amen. Ose shalom v'imramav, hu yase shalom aleinu ve'akol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. 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 If you be seated then, um, and permit me just a few moments to... Just one second, I gotta unmute. I gotta get you back to be muted. Huh? No, he's gonna speak now. Come listen to me. That's your call, Jeffrey. Huh? You're gonna you have to do it yourself, yes. Okay. Uh, Great, thank, thank you, Cantor Cher. I look forward to the day when we can do this again together in the same room at the same time. Amen. So if you just permit me, um, uh, some remarks um, in light of this week. Um, we read in the Torah, the Shabbat, the following command from God to Moses. When a man or woman commits any wrong towards a fellow man, thus breaking faith with the Lord, and that person realizes his guilt, he shall confess the wrong that he has done. It is indeed a powerful statement by God that if you have wronged a fellow human being, you've also wronged God. Too many have forgotten that we are all descendants of common parents, Adam and Eve. One of the reasons that the Torah espouses this concept is so that no one might claim the superior bloodline, as all bloodlines stem from Adam and Eve. Thus, from the Torah's point of view, all people on this planet are mishpacha, one big family. It is even reasonable to suggest that not only do we wrong God when we wrong a fellow human being, but we also hurt our family. Perhaps the greatest challenge in this commandment is our ability to recognize our own guilt. It is not unlikely that most of us have the perception that we are individually good people. 
Yes, we occasionally blunder by saying we're doing something that upon in hindsight is poor judgment. Is it ever possible that we might not recognize that we have been sinners without even noticing it? Could it be that years of consistent behaviors in any one particular way harden us and prevent us from ever thinking that we have wronged someone because we are unable to recognize that it is wrong? Over the years, we have heard and read of people who have been accused of being anti-Semites with their frequent response that they are not. Is it at all possible that when African Americans generalize and call all white people racists, that there might be a kernel of truth in this statement? How many of us would scoff at the notion, acting in a similar way to those who've been accused of anti-Semitism? We thought that when the school massacre occurred in Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut on December 14, 2012, with 28 dead, that calls for gun reform would encourage our legis legislators to act. They did not. When 17 were massacred in Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida on February 15, 2018, we thought that this might be the moment of change. Yeah, I take one of these? It was not. Will the murder of George Floyd be the moment to affect change in America? We have two options. We can sit back and wait for change, or we can, as Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change that we want to see in the world. The first step may seem simple, yet it is not. During the month of Elul, the sounding of the shofar every morning is a call for cheshbon hanefesh, an accounting of our souls. We are called upon to be our, our own forensic accountants, to take a long and careful look at our deeds. I suggest that the time is now to carefully examine who we are, to ask the serious question, is it at all possible that I might say racist things and not even recognize it? The second step is equally challenging. Call out others for their racist remarks. If we are willing to be quick to call out someone for anti-Semitic remarks, how can we not be equally quick to call out for racist remarks? It boils down to our choice of words. And with this, I conclude. On November 9th, 2018, at Point State Park in Pittsburgh, at a unity rally, I made a public pledge to never again utter the H word. It is a severe word, laden with emotion, that can lead to dangerous acts, such as the massacre of 11 Jews in the Tree of Life just 13 days prior. If you don't like something, just say, I don't like it. Many have joined me in this pledge, and I offer this modest first step in what will be a very long path towards healing. Take the H pledge. Shabbat Shalom, and thank you for being your guest. Shabbat Shalom, thank you. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi. 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 Shabbat Shalom, are you you now, Rabbi Maria Myers? You're on Fox News at six o'clock. Apparently, you told me. Um, yeah, Fox News streams my um, my six o'clock service. That's our second seating apparently tonight. So you can get seating. that through Fox News dot com, or you can go to the Facebook page. Sure, I think this is such a tremendous and stream through there as well. So what they do is they do our feed on Facebook and they run that feed. Havara, they're able to embrace this technology it can grow exponentially in size because it's no longer you got to actually. So, okay. Thank, thank you very much, and hope everyone uh, watch you. Thanks, thanks so much for joining. Um, appreciate your friendship and, and your being with us. This My privilege. I look forward to one day being reunited with all of you in person at 
perhaps the next Kenner's yeah. is only convention we where we can have a, a, a Kiddish Club act okay. uh, oh. is one oh. We did well at the last one. We'll do it again. Olivai. 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 Say, Balvini, Balvini. Yes. I like your finger, Bruce. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat